Now we are going to talk about forearm pronation and supination. Forearm pronation and supination occur primarily at two joints. These joints are your proximal radial ulnar joint and your distal radial ulnar joint. These two motions are the primary motions of the forearm. Supination is taking the hand, turning it palm up or into the anatomical position, whereas pronation is turning the hand palm down. I always remember this from a trick I learned in school. Soup is always held in a bowl. By forming a bowl with your hand, you are doing supination. Supination up, pronation down. With the pronator, you're going to pick a weight. I've chosen a two pound weight for this exercise. You're going to secure it safely and firmly in the pronator as shown in the first video. You're going to rest your arm safely and securely on a stable surface with your elbow at approximately 90 degrees and your hand unsupported. This is important for several reasons. The first is safety and isolation. By having the hand safely on a stable surface, you are able to isolate the motions of pronation and supination without any auxiliary motion from the shoulder. The other reason this position is important is if you notice, if I start with my hand on the stable surface, as I go into supination, my range of motion is limited by the surface. Whereas if I'm in an unsupported surface, I'm able to obtain full range of motion without making contact with the table. The last reason to be in this position is having the elbow at 90 degrees. This allows the bicep muscle to have its best mechanical advantage, giving it optimal supination strength. One important thing to remember is that the pronator muscles as a group are about 25% weaker than the supinator muscles. Therefore, when turning your palm up with a weight, you will be stronger than when turning your palm down. This is important to remember when starting strengthening a patient or yourself for safety reasons. That was forearm, pronation, and supination.